Joining us on the Q&A panel, we welcome back our previous presenters and Janice Wiener from the Division of Regulatory Policy 1, Office of Regulatory Policy. We'll now turn over to Lisa to facilitate the Q&A panel. Welcome, Lisa. Great. Great. Thank you, Ray, and thank you to all of our presenters. And for all of our participants joining us online, if you'd like to ask a question, please type it into the chat pod, and we will answer as many questions we can in this session. And with that, our first question is going to be for Janice. So Janice, can an ANDA applicant request a copy of the patent information submitted on form FDA 3542? If yes, what is the Good afternoon. Thank you for that question. Patent information that is submitted on Form FDA 3542 may be subject to disclosure, and the process for requesting a copy of the submitted patent information is described in our regulations at 21 CFR 314.53e. Specifically, a request for copies of submitted patent information must be sent in writing to the Freedom of Information staff at the address that's listed on the FDA's website. Great. <clears throat> Great. Thank you, Janice. We have another question for you. If an NDA holder submits a patent but it is not timely filed, will it be listed in the Orange Book anyway? If so, must an ANDA filer still certify to that patent? If the required patent information is not timely filed, the agency will list the patent information, but patent certifications or statements will be governed by our regulations on untimely filed patent information. And so with respect to an applicant who already has submitted an ANDA, if the ANDA contained an appropriate patent certification or statement before the submission of the untimely filed patent information, then that ANDA applicant is not required to submit a patent certification or statement to address the untimely filed patent information that is late listed with respect to their pending application. However, an applicant whose ANDA is submitted after the untimely filing of the patent information or if they had a pending ANDA and it was previously submitted but did not contain an appropriate patent certification or statement at the time that this untimely filed patent information was submitted, then those applicants would be required to submit an appropriate patent certification or statement to that patent information. And I would just note that the agency has um, begun to list the patent submission dates in the Orange Book on a prospective basis to enable applicants to determine whether a patent is late listed as to a pending ANDA or as to a pending 505B2 application. Great, thank you so much. Our next question will be for Commander Kunshen. Can you please come? comment back on the differences between Form 3452 and 3542A, and when each should be OK, yeah, thank you for the questions. Uh, as uh, presented earlier uh, by me and also by uh, Dr. Chen, that uh, the difference between the two forms is really on the, the, uh, the time of submissions, when to submit these. And uh, usually uh, for the 3542A, uh, they are required, you know, you can submit them before the NDA or NDA supplements approved. Uh, and then these you submit it to directly under the, A the NDA. Okay. And uh, but for 3542, uh, those are to be submitted after the approval of your NDA or NDA supplement. And those you need to 
submit also under the, the NDA and then also uh, the Orange Book will process the form 3542 according to how you fill them out and then we do not process form 3542A. Thank you. Thank you, Commander Shen. We have another question for you. Is the digital signature acceptable? And also, is it impossible to list a patent after the 30-day deadline? OK, yeah. Uh, thank you for the questions again. Uh, for, I believe, Jenna's previous response to her one of the questions or the answer about the uh, late filing, you know, for a patent that's filed after 30 days of deadline. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to address the questions about digital, digital signatures acceptable or not. Yes, the, 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 the digital signature is acceptable. And uh, you can review the, the tape later uh, for a generous response on uh, filing after 30 days deadline. Thanks. Great, thank you. And now we have a question for Alicia Chen. If we request a delisting of a patent, but don't see that it's been done within a certain time frame, who should we contact? Hi, thank you for that question. Um, that's a good one. So you should have the authorized US agent for the NDA holder contact the Orange Book mailbox at the orangebook at fda.hhs.gov with, with whatever relevant submission information that you've already submitted to the application. Um, it's important to note whether and when the submission was made to the application so that it can be easily um, triaged and located. And um, just to add, in terms of the patent delistings, these should be processed in a similar timeline to daily patent listings. So if you're noticing, um, just like the, the question, um, the person who asked the question was alluding to, that if it's taking much longer than that regular process, it's possible that either the Orange Book staff is not yet in receipt of the submission or that there is an outgoing correspondence that the agency has already sent to the NDA holder that um, we're waiting for a response to finish processing that delist. For example, um, out of those requirements in the letter, you know that they have to include the patent number, the applicable products, and it's not unheard of that maybe the NDA holder forgot to identify which one of the patents needed to be delisted and only specified the application number. And in that situation, we would be able to process it fully until we had all the required information. Great. Thank you so much, Alicia. We have another question for you. So to clarify, are patent delisting request letters still required to be submitted through the ECTD? Hi, Lisa. Do you mind repeating that question, please? Sure. So the question is, if you could clarify, are patent delisting request letters required to be submitted through the ECTD format? Thank you. This feels just like a live panel now. Um, so in terms of the um, delisting and the different patent submission requests, these do need to be submitted via ECTD. So in terms of the NDA holder who, um, who ha is the patent owner, they do need to submit those to the ECTD. When we get to the conversation of D-lists, that is a different submission process. And we'll get to that in the next session. OK, great. And we have another question for you, Alicia. If a third party discovers what they feel is a typo in a patent number, but does not know whether the typo came from FDA entry or if it was a typo in the 3542 form, what should the third party Sure, another great question. Uh, so this one, it should be submitted as a third party dispute. The FDA's role in the patents is ministerial and what we'll do is um, go through essentially the dispute process. I'll cover, as I mentioned, I'll cover the patent listing disputes in the next session, session number five. And um, kind of to bring back an example, we, we actually did have this happened 
happened somewhat recently, um, it doesn't happen often, in which a patent was submitted by the NDA holder that was off by one digit. And when that happened, the patent that used to be, that was intended to be for a drug, actually became a patent that was listed for engine oil. And so we received several um, patent listing disputes for that particular patent, and those were processed through um, the patent listing dispute process. Great, thank you so much, Alicia. And now we will go to Janice. We have two questions for you. Janice, could you clarify when patent information is required to be submitted on Form FDA 3542A with a supplement to an NDA and on FDA Form 3542 following approval of a supplement to an NDA? Thank you for that question. Our regulations describe two broad categories of supplements for purposes of required submission of patent information. And I'm referring to our regulations at 21 CFR 314.53 D2. In the first category, for supplements that seek approval to add or change the dosage form, route of administration, or strength, or to change the drug product from prescription use to over-the-counter use, the applicant is required to submit the complete patent information that's required under our regulations with the submission of the supplement on Form FDA 3542A and following approval on Form FDA 3542. In the second category, for supplements that seek approval for another type of change, for example, to change the formulation or to add a new indication or other condition of use, the patent information submission requirements depend on whether the existing patent information that was submitted to FDA for the product approved in the original NDA continue to claim the changed product. So if the patent or patents that are listed in the orange book for the approved NDA also claim the changed product, then the applicant is not required to resubmit this patent information on forms FDA 3542A or 3542 unless the use code published in the orange book for the product would change upon approval of the supplement. If, however, one or more listed patents no longer claims the product as changed by the supplement, then the applicant must submit a request to correct or remove the patent information from the list at the time of approval of the supplement. Finally, if there are one or more existing patents that claim the product as changed by the supplement and this patent information has not been submitted to FDA, then the applicant must submit the patent information with the supplement on Form FDA 3542A and following approval of the supplement on Form FDA 3542. Thank you so much, Janice. We have another question for you. If a new Form FDA 3542 is submitted to revise information on a listed patent for the drug product, how should an NDA holder identify what has changed? Thank you for that question. And the, the response to this question also was nicely illustrated in the slides of Dr. Chen's presentation. So I would encourage folks to take a look at that presentation as well. If a patent has been submitted previously for listing for the drug product, and an NDA holder submits a new form FDA 3542 to update the previously submitted information, then the NDA holder would need to answer yes to question 1G on the form and identify all changes from the previously submitted form FDA 3542 and specify whether each change is related to the patent or related to an FDA action or procedure. For example, an applicant may describe a change to the expiration date of the patent and note that the change is related to the patent 
because it is the result of a patent term extension. As another example, an applicant may describe in Section 1H of the form the addition of a new use code for a patent that's related to FDA's approval of an NDA supplement for a new indication. Um, and I would just note that the applicant uh, also would need to complete Sections 4 and 6 of the form uh, 3542. If the NDA holder intends to remove or modify a currently listed use code for the patent, then this should be described in Section 1H as well. And I would just remind uh, the group that the agency considers removal or modification of a use code to be a withdrawal of the currently listed use code and a request to remove the currently listed use code from the list, in other words, a delisting request. And I would just encourage folks to please be sure to identify all changes from the previously submitted form FDA 3542 to assist the Orange Book staff in updating the listed patent information where appropriate. Thank you so much, Janice, for taking the time to thoughtfully answer so many questions. Um, our next question is for Commander Kunchen. If there is a corporate name change to the patent holder and or the sponsor of the NDA, should the Form 3542-S be revised? Is there a deadline for submission of these types of changes? Okay, yeah, thank you for the questions. I believe uh, the question is asking if they need to submit, uh, resubmit 3542 when there's a corporate name change uh, to the patent holders or sponsor. Uh, if the patent is already listed in the Orange Book and the uh, name change to the corporate, you do not need to resubmit a new 3542 just because the name of those change. But on your next submission, if you have another, uh, you make modification to your MOU on, 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 on other changes to your listing patent, yes, then those new information would go on there. Thank you. We have another question for you, Commander Chen. How long does it take for the Orange Book staff to process our patents for listing? How soon should we check back with the Orange Book staff? Okay, yeah, thank you for the questions. Uh, normally, it takes us a couple of days to process these uh, your, your patent and put them in, uh, in the EOV, Electronic Orange Book. So wait a couple of days. Uh, I cannot specify like how many days, but like a, a couple of days. And then check back in the uh, Electronic Orange Book. And if your patent is not listed, uh, feel free to contact the Orange Book staff at orangebook at fda.hhs.gov. Thank you. Great, thank you. And our next question is for Dr. Chen. Can you please clar further clarify situations when you would submit by letter or by form FDA 3540? Sure, thank you for that question. Um, so the summary, the quick and easy summary is that a cover letter is great to accompany any patent submission. So if you are submitting any form FDA 3542 or 3542A, a cover letter is a good accompaniment to that to explain the patent, the patent forms that are being submitted. Now, if um, the one situation that you would need only a cover letter would be a patent delisting, also known as a patent withdrawal. And then in that situation, a form FDA 3542 is optional to be submitted together with that. OK, great. Thank you. We have another question for you. Our patent is listed, but the submission date is not correct. How do we get this information corrected in the order? Thank you for that question. So this question is, uh, is similar and along um, the same lines of the question regarding the, um, the patent that they felt may be listed in error, 
But in this situation, if it's a submission date um, of the NDA holder itself, themselves, then the NDA holder should email these error requests for review to the Orange Book staff at the Orange Book mailbox, um, orangebook at fda.hhs.gov. And then those requests are considered on a case-by-case -case basis. If we find that there was an error that was made, then it'll be updated in the Orange Book as soon as possible. And then in the other situation, if, say, the Orange Book staff reviews that request from the NDA holder and it's found that maybe the NDA holder um, had made an error on their end, then that situation would require a new um, a correction to the form FDA 3542. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And thank you to all of our panelists for taking the time again out of their day to answer these questions. And with that, we are going